here and now today. It is me here today with you to uh, mourn the Palestinians. This uh, genocide is continuing another week. And the uh, International Court of Justice is deliberating. It is hearing counter arguments, you know, from other parties who want to intervene on behalf of one party or another. For example, Germany had uh, declared that it wanted to, to intervene as a friend of Israel and make its uh, declaration on behalf of its case. So it all amounts to, you know, what is uh, presented in, in my painting there, you know, one Holocaust does not uh, justify another. The word justify is there with justice because it's a matter of justice. In the International Court of the Justice if it is a court of justice, must rule in favor of the Palestinians, of the people who are subject to genocide. And there is no other case that has been more clear as a matter of genocide than this case, more clear than any of the African cases, the Rwanda case. Even though that's only half the story, it's very, very slow, too slow. So I have some developments to show you here, and I'll share the screen with you and play the uh, audio as well. And it's a matter of the force, the political force that Jewish people's power can have in stopping this genocide. Now, for the time being, this is a lost cause inside of the state of Israel. The Israeli Jewish public is Pluto-Sionist, you know, like mostly Zionist. Like 1.3% are opposed, something like that, you know, 1.83% are, are fundamentally opposed to what is happening. The U.S. are divided in between those who think it's adequate, 46%, I think it is, you know, and then there's 53% who approve and some who want it to be more than it is. So, okay, they've alienated the world. Even, you know, the media is now coming down on Israel for what it's doing. So, let's see what's happening in, amongst the Jewish people. And we are the majority. We are not living in Israel. We are not citizens of Israel. We don't have a vote for the Israel elections. We are not are responsible for the Israel government, and the Israel government yet claims that it's speaking and acting on behalf of the Jewish people as a whole, and this is a lie, and I'll prove it to you here and now. Let's go. I'm going to share some screen here with you. Yeah. I think this is the first screen. Yes, it is. You know who this is? This is not in our name. This is this generation. Now, I'm going to start the video on one computer and the audio on another computer because I burnt out the audio on my principal computer. Of course. I'll do the uh, audio as well, but it didn't start. Why not?
Yes, it does start. Here in New York, about 500 members of Jewish Voice for Peace and their allies rallied at the Statue of Liberty Monday to demand a ceasefire in Gaza. Protesters wore black t shirts reading, Not in Our Name. <laughs> Here in New York, about 500 members of Jewish Voice for Peace and their allies rallied at the Statue of Liberty Monday to demand a ceasefire in Gaza. Protesters wore black t shirts reading, Not in Our Name. Here in New York, about 500 members of Jewish Voice for Peace and their allies rallied at the Statue of Liberty Monday to demand a ceasefire in Gaza. Protesters wore black t shirts reading, Not in Our Name. There. Okay. Now, I have Oh, this is another, yes. Now check this out. This is the opposition, what the opposition faces uh, inside uh, the Zionist state, inside of Israel. Is it real? This is not real. This is surreal what's coming up. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like, okay. So that's supposed to be, you know, like the only democracy in the Middle East. That's what conventional wisdom says, right? Okay, wait a second. Let me get back here. Now, yeah, okay. Conventional wisdom is that Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East, whatever that is. The Middle East of what? In the Western Orient, this is the Orient that Israel is stepping on. It calls itself democracy because it's supposed to be representing the free world. 
free world that would cause self democracy? Well, it's not, right? Okay, and there's the proof. So, you know, Israel's democracy until there's war, and then it's a dictatorship. So, in order to become a dictatorship, it just has to wage war. You know, it's like a switch, and it goes on and off, you know, like every, what is it, you know, five years? Well, this time they've left the switch on, it's broken. And now inside the war cabinet, there's a big dispute on between those who want to leave it on and those who want to switch it on and off. You know, that's about the only difference there is, you know, between the, the fascist Zionists and the liberal labor Zionists. You know, so much for the working class. Okay, so now I've got something to show you that's <laughs> incredible, you know, like because it is a merging of minds that developed, you know, as far as I remember, you know, in 2011, when I was in Nablus and I got to speak with Hamas, Nablus leader, sophisticated guy, you know, didn't even insist upon my taking off, didn't, you know, forbid me to take off my shoes and come into his apartment. He didn't want me to bother. And then we spoke with an interpreter, you know, like, and I was able to communicate for the first time with Hillel, not Hillel, you know, Hamas, in direct and explain to them, you know, what a Jewish Bundes refugee has to think about, you know, Zionism and how it's not representative of the Jewish people and all that, you know, like the whole Bundes theory, Bundes history, the Bundes reality before the Zionists took it over, after the Jewish working class of Europe was obliterated together with the Jewish Bundes members, the 38,000 member activist and so here I'm showing you how it is coming together again. And that's what this is all about. Next. Next. Here we have. Yes. And Shrestha. We affirm that this conflict is with the Zionist project, not with the Jews because of their religion. We do not wage a struggle against the Jews because they are Jewish, but we wage a struggle against the Zionists who occupy Palestine. Yet, it is the Zionists who constantly identify Judaism and the Jews with their own colonial project and illegal entity. We reject the persecution of any human being or the undermining of his or her rights on nationalist, religious, or sectarian grounds. We are of the view that the Jewish problem, anti-Semitism, and the persecution of Jews are phenomena fundamentally linked to European history and not to the history of the Arabs and the Muslims or to their heritage. The Zionist movement, which was able with the help of Western powers to occupy Palestine, is the most dangerous form of settlement occupation which has already disappeared from much of the world and must disappear from Palestine. Um, you're wondering where you can read that quote. It's actually an excerpt from the Hamas Charter of 2017. Um, instead of saying Hamas, I said we. Uh, just so I wouldn't give it away immediately. The reason that I said those two specifically is because we continue to hear every single day that in the Hamas doctrine and charter, it says that they want to eliminate all Jews, that they want to commit a genocide against Jewish people. And that is just completely incorrect. Now, a lot of people, when they're talking about Hamas and the Hamas charter, they're talking about the one from the 1980s. They updated it, 2017, we're in the 21st century. And they know that. We affirm that this conflict is with the Zionist project, not with the Jews because of their religion. Wow. Okay. Now, to come back. Beautiful, huh? And Hamas, you know, proceeded that by putting the Muslim Brotherhood, which is an alliance based upon uh, a certain religious doctrine and uh, and uh, not just only a doctrine, you know, but there's uh, these divisions, you know, that are very sectarian with one another. And they justify each other on one point, you know, while, you know, violating various other points at the same time. That's the definition of a sectarianism. So here we are, you know, and uh, what did Hamas really do? You know, like, when they acted on October the 7th, was it, you know, the 1988 charter or was it the 2017 charter? Well, now the evidence is coming out that it's the 2017 charter that prevailed of the disciplined Hamas fighters. 
who did not go to assassinate and kill, you know, like civilians, Jewish, Israeli civilians for no reason. And, uh, you know, like this is not the case. And uh, it can be shown to be such. I have another uh, site to show you. And uh, you know, what it is, is that they had a strategy. The strategy, you know, was to end solidarity with the West Bank by way of the provocation that was, you know, instilled by the uh, Zionist state when they went and occupied the Alaska Mosque. So, you know, there was desecration of the mosque. They were told that it was desecration, that there would be a retaliation or response. And this is not a retaliation in the normal sense. You know, the mosque endorses some suicide bomber or someone, you know, who takes revenge, you know, because somebody else in their family was killed. No, this was a strategy. This, this had strategy. This strategy was to take hostages in order to exchange them for the Palestinian prisoners who numbered 5,000 at the time most of whom, except for 563, were imprisoned, you know, for political reasons and were political prisoners and were not involved in uh, violence against uh, civilians. Uh, those uh, of the 563 who are involved in violence against military are soldiers, you know, are not um, uh, criminals in the uh, civil sense. So that's yet to be determined, you know, but now since October the 7th, there's been, you know, another 5,000 who have been arrested from the West Bank and have been imprisoned. So uh, the hostages have to be released, you know, for all the prisoners, you know, have been taken, you know, just because, you know, they, they've they been taken since October the 7th as a means, you know, of exchange, you know, for the hostages, you know, should not be enabled. It should be all of the prisoners and not just those who have been taken, you know, in order to do, uh, nullify the hostages that were taken by Hamas in the first place. Now, as for those who float across the uh, breached border were not Hamas fighters who were civilians and who may have uh, uh, committed, you know, uh, uh, human rights violations or civil violations. They should be prosecuted. Prosecuted, first of all, you know, by the judicial procedure, you know, in, of the Palestinians themselves who should prosecute such individuals. And the Israelis who are subject to such um, violations should, you know, file for prosecution in the Palestinian judicial process. And I think they would be treated there uh, rather harshly. Now, let's have a little court here. Okay, let's have a hearing. You know, let's hear the accusations against Hamas. Okay, let's see now, you know, like how we can do this. Let's go to uh, a Zionist uh, website that uh, carries the accusations. Share screen again. I think it's uh, in here, and here we go. Now, let's see. Is it here? No, 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 no. Her name is uh, Atia Arif. Very interesting. And uh, I have to find... Uh, The, uh, I think it's, it's in this, uh, yes, here we are. This is the website with all the documentation for the HamasMassacre.com, right? You know, this is what we can see here. So we have, everyone's heard of this, you know, like Hamas Massacre documented war crimes. Mm -hmm. Hamas massacre of babies, war crimes. War crimes, you know, that means that they're, that uh, Israel is at war with, with whom? Well, I guess it's with Palestine. So this is a de facto recognition of Palestine as a state by the use of the term war here, first of all. Hamas massacre of babies. It doesn't say 40 babies, but I think this must be what it's referring to, the 40 beheaded babies, you know, that were talked about initially. That were used as a justification for the genocide, you know, for the whole occupation of uh, Gaza. This was the reason why there's an occupation of Gaza at this moment. A mass massacre at music festival. Oh, okay, let's see. I saw, you know, like videos of, you know, from the Israel military itself showing how they were targeting fleeing festival goers who were, you know, Jewish Israelis. 
And so from what I hear lately, you know, 70 vehicles were firebombed like that. Pictures of a mass massacre. Okay, they're supposed to be body cam pictures of the mass uh, fighters who, you know, uh, you know, recorded their own, you know, uh, horrific uh, massacres. Okay, Hamas massacre, raw, raw footage. That's it. That's the raw footage we want to see. Hamas massacre film, a whole film. Wow. Okay, okay, let's start up here. Okay, we're going to click on this. Let's go. Oh, what? Uh -huh. Sponsored results. This is the results for Hamas massacre documented war crimes this is it this is it right here copyright it's copyrighted hamasmassacre.com all rights reserved privacy policy this is it this must be it must be it you know it's copyrighted it must be true right but where is it okay let's go back let's try another one let's try another one okay let's go back here uh hamas massacre babies yeah okay oh oh Oh, nothing. Oh, wait a second. Let's go back another one. Uh, third one here. First of all, come on, show us the military, you know, like videos of how they massacred 70 cars filled with people. No? Okay. Let's see now. What about this one? Picture. Okay. No, 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 no. So far, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. She's saying Yiddish, Gunisht. Gunisht, Gunisht and Gunisht. Okay. That's, you know, okay, so that's just one website, you know, that's what's supposed to have the information, you know, like you would presume that they would uh, put the content into the website that's announced. Uh, I heard about this website from one of the young uh, uh, Orthodox kids, you know, like living in the neighborhood of the Jewish community campus where I'm vigiling on Sundays and going back tomorrow, even if it's minus 12 degrees centigrade. And he told me, you know, go to this website and you will see, you know, so, okay, I've gone. I have not seen it. So now I'll have to tell him. He was in the last video, you know, like I'm... Uh, a web body cam, you know, uh, recording, you know, everything the whole day, because uh, I really get uh, uh, say we say in French, you know, but uh, I really get uh, uh, sort of, you know, confronted. And sometimes uh, there's, you know, like uh, pushing, you know, the last time I was pushed, two two weeks ago, I was pushed, yeah. I tried to take down the banner. So I told him, don't touch that banner. <laughs> he got scared and said, don't hit me, don't hit me. Okay, I won't hit you. Just leave the banner alone. And then he got lost. He stopped his vehicle right in the middle of the road, you know, and got out and came over. It's incredible, you know, like in the second video of that day. And then there was another time, yeah, in which, you know, you know, somebody driving a red car, you know, with these big mirrors on the side, you know, and he sort of swerved, you know, as I was holding my sign, you know, like one Holocaust is not just by another. I only had my painting at the time all up there. I was holding it out into the roadway so that people could see it. It was pressed nearly nighttime, you know, and the, that the headlights were sh lighting it up, you know, it was very visible because it's acrylic paint. <laughs> so you know, she swerved and tried to hit, you know, the sign, you know, with the mirror. Wow, it was incredible. That's also on video there. It's incredible, you know, with the body cam, you know, can capture. It's really good stuff. Okay, so everybody's busy today, you know. Too bad Ahmed can come on, you know, like he's working at this time. And then he's wiped out other times. So, but, you know, the continuing genocide of the Palestinians there. And, you know, what people don't know about, you know, like is the offensive that's taking place in the West Bank as well. You know, 11 uh, Palestinians were killed in the refugee camp of uh, Balada the other day, where I was. That's where I started doing my uh, solidarity work, you know, in 2003 in Balada camp with Tom Hurdle. Yeah, I should tell you about that, you know, like I uh, only have a few photos of that. I could show them to you. Why not? 
<laughs> wow. Here. Well, I don't have it set up. I'll tell you what. I promised to show you the photos from Balada Refugee Camp in 2003. Next week. Uh, uh, and tell you what happened, you know, as I show you the photos. But that was with Tom Hurdle. You know, after two weeks, you know, like uh, we managed to open up the camp, you know, because they closed down the main market, you know, road with these hills of uh, earth and stone. And uh, and the city itself, you know, like was closed down since 2001 until 2003 with a big, you know, mound of of, uh, of earth and stone, you know, on the main uh, highway, you know, the Shara El Quds, the highway to uh, Jerusalem. And that's when, you know, the Makata, you know, the headquarters of the of the Palestinian Authority was was blasted, you know, by tank fire. I have pictures, you know, of the wall, you know, the big tank hole shell, you know, where I'd gone through. Incredible. That time, you know, and uh, I have much to tell you. Okay, bye for now. And uh, uh, I'll have the uh, videos going all day tomorrow.